Uh, hi, everyone. So this talk is, to, uh, is about the uh, secure computation in the correlated randomness model. And more specifically, it deals with the uh, long quest for secure computation with low communication. So what secure computation? You have some number of parties. Here I will focus on the case of two parties for simplicity, but everything I say can be extended to more parties. And they would like to jointly compute some public function f on their joint private inputs. And the protocol should be correct, meaning that all the parties should get to learn the output of the function. And it should be secure in the sense that no party should learn anything more from the protocol than the output of the function. So if you, want, if you don't care about security, and if you want to compute a function, then it's easy to see that Alice and Bob only need to exchange their inputs, meaning that the communication required to insecurely compute a function is just the size of the inputs multiplied by the number of parties. And in contrast, the first protocols for secure computation, uh, the one by Yao in 1986 and the GMW protocol in 1987, had a communication complexity which is proportional to the circuit size of the function. So a very important, a very fundamental question in secure computation has been since the introduction of the first secure computation protocol uh, to understand whether this is inherent, whether uh, securely computing a function does inherently require much more computation than uh, insecurely computing a function. Now, since the breakthrough work of, of Gentry in 2009, we know that under some suitable computational assumptions, so some variant of the learning with error assumption, it's actually possible to securely compute any function with optimal communication, input size plus output size plus some polynomial in the security parameter. And it, we also uh, learned more recently that it's possible to securely compute a large class of function with a communication which is sublinear in the size of the circuit under the decisional Diffie-Hellman assumption. So under computational assumptions that are widely believed to hold, this is more or less a solved problem. So in this talk, I'm going to revisit a bit this question in the context of secure computation in the correlated randomness model. What is a correlated randomness model? In this model, you have a trusted dealer that before the start of the protocol will generate and distribute correlated random coins that are independent of the inputs to the protocol and give them to the parties. Then the parties can use these correlated random coins um, in the actual secure computation protocol. So why do we care about this model? There are two main reasons. First, I was shown by, as was shown by Beaver in 1991, um, such uh, uh, allowing a trusted setup that distributes correlated random coins to the parties allows for information theoretically secure computation in the online phase. And this is in stark contrast with uh, standard secure computation without a setup, which uh, obviously requires computational hardness assumptions. The second reason why we care about so much, uh, that we care so much about the correlated randomness model is that it turns out that it leads to extremely efficient, like concretely efficient, secure computation protocols. And in fact, almost all modern secure computation protocols that uh, aim uh, at being concretely efficient that you can see nowadays uh, do work in this model. Like they work in two phases. In some preprocessing phase, the parties will jointly generate some correlated random coins. And then in the online phase, the party will consume those random coins to uh, securely evaluate the function. And this secure evaluation will not only be information theoretically secure, it's also extremely fast. Yet, all known protocols that we know of in the correlated randomness model for general functions require a communication which is proportional to the circuit size of the function. Uh, so the question is to understand whether this is inherent. And actually, it was proven by Damgard et al. in 2016 that this is indeed inherent for a large class of protocols in the correlated randomness model that were called gate-by-gate -gate protocols, which captured, at the time, all known protocols um, in the correlated randomness model. So um, in this work, I'm going to revisit a bit this question and show that we can somehow hope to get kind of the best of both worlds meaning simultaneously the sublinear communication guarantees that we could only achieve as of today in the case of computationally secure computation, but at the same time having information theoretic security and good concrete efficiency with like only known cryptographic operation in the online phase. More, preci more precisely, I show the following. For any layered Boolean circuit, so a Boolean circuit is layered if you can uh, partition its nodes in layers so that any edge only goes from one layer to the next layer. 
for any layered Boolean circuit of size S, there is a secure computation protocol with all the properties you can want, like no honest majority, any number of parties, adaptive security, security against malicious adversaries, that can securely evaluate uh, this uh, circuit using total communication proportional to S over log log S. Arguably, that's only slightly sublinear, but the real uh, takeoff of this result is that there is no circuit size barrier. It's possible to go below this barrier. The, this result can be extended to the interesting case of arithmetic circuits uh, using kind of the same techniques, but it requires a few additional ideas, as well as the case of function independent preprocessing. And uh, it, since uh, if the constants are very small, actually the constant here is one up to low order terms, it also actually leads to concrete efficiency improvement for some existing secure computation protocols. And in this talk, to simplify, I will focus on the case of two parties and semi honest security. Uh, the extension to the more general case is not that hard. OK, so how does that work? Our starting point is a well-known protocol for sharing true stable correlations. These protocols allow to securely evaluate any function in the correlated randomness model with information theoretic security um, when the function is represented by its true stable. So we take some function f. And we'll represent the function f by uh, its trust table m, so the function evaluated at all possible points. And our trusted dealer will first pick uh, a random shift r. And he will shift the trust table r by this offset, as uh, the trust table m, sorry, by this offset. And at the same time, our trusted dealer will uh, share this offset r in two parts. Here, the addition will denote a bitwise operation, so bitwise xor. Uh, so we have the shifted trustable M prime, and then the trusted dealer will additionally share this uh, shifted trust table in two parts, M prime zero and M prime one. And then each of the parties will receive a share of the offset and a share of the shifted trust table. Now, using this preprocessed correlated random coins, uh, securely evaluating the function F turns out to be extremely easy because the parties can simply exchange their inputs, x0 and x1, masked by their share of the offset r. So u0 and u1 form shares now of x plus r. So by simply now doing a lookup search in, the, in their share of the, trust, of the uh, truth table, they will recover um, what you can easily check to be additive shares of f of x. So this means that to securely evaluate the function f, the parties only had to exchange their mass input, so uh, the protocol has optimal communication uh, to n. However, uh, the storage requirement to securely evaluate this function is proportional to the size of the trust table representing the function. So it's exponential in the input size, and that's quite bad. So the natural ID, if we want to uh, get sublinear communication in the correlated randomness model, is to start from this protocol and ask whether it's possible to make this storage polynomial instead of exponential. Turns out that it's unlikely to be easy, because it was proven in 2013 that if we could achieve a polynomial storage uh, for securely evaluating any function, then that would imply a breakthrough result uh, for some long-standing open problem related to the study of information theoretic private information retrieval. So I'm not trying to do any breakthrough result here. Instead, um, let's try to work around this issue by doing something extremely simple. And the extremely simple thing will be just a simple modification of this true stable correlation protocol. The core lemma that I'm going to prove, and which is a very, very simple lemma, is the following. Take any C local function. What's a C local function? It's a function such that any output bit depends on at most C input bits. So you can see that the function as being um, concatenation of functions f1 to fm, each of them being applied to a size C subset of the input bits. Then there is a protocol that securely, evaluate, uh, that securely allows to evaluate to obtain shares of the function with perfect security in the correlated randomness model. Whereas the communication is again optimal, big O of n, the input size, but where now the storage requirement is m times 2 to the c plus n. Compared to the previous protocol, what we've done is just shifting the exponential cost of this storage requirement from the input size to the locality parameter. So, how do we do it? It's pretty simple. Intuitively, 
uh, since a function only operates on subsets of size c of the inputs, instead of looking at the big trust table of the entire function, you, you can look at the list of trust tables for each of the output bits of the function, for each of the partial functions. Because each of these partial functions is a function on inputs of size c. So each of these trust tables only has size 2 to the c. So what we can do is just apply the previous protocol in parallel for each of the output bits. Um, and then the trusted layer will generate those shares and those shifts. Now we get a protocol where the storage is just m times 2 to the c, up to some uh, additive thing. But now the communication has increased, because for securely doing all those protocols in parallel, we need now 2c bits of communication for each of the m output bits. And this is too big, actually. That's more than the big O of m communication that I claim that we could have. So the next ID is that we can go back to this uh, communication proportional to m by uh, not using independent shifts for all those m trust, uh, th um, for all those m uh, true stable. Instead, the trusted dealer will only pick a single global offset R, and those R1 to Rm will not be defined as independent offset, but as appropriate subsets of the bits of this single global offset, where the subset are the subset S1 to Sm, corresponding to the subset of the bits that you need to take to compute the function. If you do so, then the parties now only need to exchange x0 plus r0 and x1 plus r1. And intuitively, uh, applying the uh, m protocols in parallel only requires to take some appropriate subset of the bits of those masked inputs. And the security is easy to prove. So we, uh, um, with this variant of the protocol, um, we obtain essentially the, exactly the same communication as before. But the correlated randomness now is a bit different, and we can still prove the protocol to satisfy perfect security. So this is what I call the core lemma. As you could see, a very simple lemma. You can have optimal communication and a cost exponential in the locality, locality parameter of the function. Uh, let's see why this is useful uh, for the question at hand. So as I told you, the result uh, that we prove shows that we can securely compute with uh, sublinear communication any layered Boolean circuit. So let's look at the layered Boolean circuit. The nodes can be partitioned into layers. The edges go from one layer to the next layer. And we will uh, partition these, um, this function into chunks. Each chunk will contain k consecutive layers. And we will uh, look at like, some selected node on the last layer of a chunk and see this selected node, like the value computed on this node, as a function of the value computed on the last layer of the previous chunk, together with the input nodes of the same chunk. Let's ignore them for now. So intuitively, um, the obvious observation here is that since uh, a graph representing the circuit as in degree 2, then the selected node can only have 2 to the k ancestors if you go k layers above. So a phrase in terms of locality, the function that maps the values on the last layer of a chunk to the values on the last layer of the next chunk is a 2 to the k local uh, function with w inputs, where w is the width of our, um, of our Boolean circuit. So we have a local function. We go back to our um, call lemma. And so but using the call lemma directly, since this, this fi is a 2 to the k local function, we know that we can securely compute shares of fi um, given shares of the input with communication proportional to w, this width parameter, and storage, which is only exponential in uh, the locality parameter. So the storage will be proportional to 2 to the 2 to the k. What follows is quite easy. Um, we will divide uh, the input uh, we will let the, the parties share the input between them. And then they will divide the function to evaluate into d over k chunks. Each chunk, as I said, con um, containing k consecutive layers. d is the depth of the function. And we call each, each of this function f1 to fd over k. For each um, last layer, for, for all the values of the last layer of the chunk, the parties will use a protocol given by the call lemma to securely compute with optimal communication shares of the value on the last layer of the next chunk. That means that we obtain now a protocol whose total communication 
is uh, the width times d over k. So if you adjust things right, uh, w times d, that will just be your circuit size. I'm assuming here for simplicity that the um, circuit we'll deal with if is a rectangle, but you don't need any such structural requirement. You will end up for arbitrary shape of the circuit with a protocol whose total communication is s over k. And the storage requirement of the protocol now is w times 2 to the 2 to the k multiplied by d over k, which is just essentially s times 2 to the 2 to the k uh, divided by k. And as you can uh, guess, you obtain the claimed result by setting k to be uh, log log s. So that shows that you can securely evaluate any layered Boolean circuit um, with a polynomial amount of storage and total communication proportional to s over log log s. This can be extended to malicious security. That's quite simple. You can also extend it to the arithmetic circuit. Here, you cannot use true stable correlations anymore because a true stable for an arithmetic function over an exponentially large field will be uh, way too big. But if you represent uh, instead uh, the chunks of your function by multivariate polynomials, you can essentially derive the same kind of approach and obtain a similar result uh, communication S over log log S number of group elements, of field elements. There are some open questions, of course, that, this, um, that comes from this work. Uh, first, now, where is the real buyer? So we've achieved s over log log s. That will be not very satisfying if s over log log s was a real communication barrier that we cannot hope to break. So where is the real barrier? Uh, is it possible to get sublinear communication uh, and still linear computation? Because the protocol I gave here has a computation which is quadratic in the size of the circuit. And it can be reduced to slightly superlinear in the size of the circuit, but linear uh, is not something we can achieve here. So can we achieve linear computation and sublinear communication? And is it possible to remove this layered circuit requirement and extend the result to all circuits? And that's all. Thank you for your attention. <laughs>